how good the Lord is. Blessings to each of you. Indeed, I am delighted to come to you this morning as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. It is another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. Just want you to know that God has blessed us to see now the third Sunday of 2021. And I want you to get your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 37. I want you to start around verse 18. I'm going to be looking at verses 12 through 20 today, but I'll read verses 18, 19, and 20. I'm going to be talking about this whole witnessing beyond your wounds, and specifically today, how, how you have to deal with obstacles when you are obedient to God. Just because you're obedient to the Father does not mean you will not face some mm. obstacles and some opposition. So I look forward to sharing with you in that moment. Also, this is the Sunday that we will be sharing a portion of the vision for 2021. This year, Vision 21 will have basic components such as this digital approach to ministry, a virtual approach to ministry, and this social approach to ministry. Our theme is still witnessing, being transformed through witnessing. As we're transformed through witnessing, we understand that the pandemic has caused us to move into this digital and virtual space more than we ever imagined. But thanks be unto God, we see this not as an obstacle, but we see this as an opportunity. And we would love for you to join us as we embrace this opportunity to reach the masses and to ultimately reach the world. At this time, our executive pastor, Pastor Frank Kennedy, is going to come and share a summary perspective of this vision 2021 as we are transformed through witnessing and we're excited about what God is going to do in the life of the New Mount Olive Baptist Church. Thank you so much, Pastor. And of course, New Mount Olive, uh, I indeed greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I'm so excited to share with you uh, just a snippet uh, of Vision 2021. Matter of fact, let me say to you, it's really a remix of 2020. And of course, we had no way of knowing that we would be literally ambushed by a pandemic. Now, having said that, what we literally commit ourselves to do this year is to creatively use the platforms that we believe are apropos and applicable for the New Mount Olive Baptist Church. Now, the question always is, how are we going to do it? And I want to share with you aspirationally, motivationally, we're going to get it done. I encourage each of you to internalize the reality of who you are and what we have been called to do, both individually and collectively. You are a witness. You are a steward of the gospel, the good news. And indeed, in this climate, Pastor has literally commissioned us to continue this cultivation of our congregation, a culture whereby we are becoming who we are already. We're already witnesses. And of course, we want to move you from witnessing in principle to witnessing in praxis. Praxis suggesting that we're going to witness this year reflectively and critically and creatively. We're going to be intentional. And indeed, if you are intentional, intentional and accountable. Now, accountability is so critical because ultimately we have to be accountable to God for this glorious gospel that he has deposited. Then we must be accountable to our church. God has added us to this local body so that we might be influential, impactful, make a difference in this world. So how will we do that? How will we expand our capacity? How will we extend our contribution as a congregation? Ultimately, the question is, how will we witness intentionally? How will we witness sensitively? How will we witness in a very sacred but yet creative way? The pastor has shared with you, we'll do that digitally, we'll do that virtually, and we'll do that socially. So here's what I want to give you now 
I want to first start with a spiritual component of the new year, 2021. Every Tuesday, Pastor and I welcome you to the sanctuary of the New Mount, New Mount Olive Baptist Church where we will literally be praying at the altar and we will lead you in prayer time. And matter of fact, I want to encourage you to look forward to our time together in prayer every Tuesday at 12 noon. And of course, we'll lead you in prayer. We'll pray for your concerns. We'll pray for whatever perhaps is your issue. We want to do that. Don't forget it. You got to put that down. That's so important to our witnessing in the new year that we literally lead you live and we will be live in the sanctuary leading you in prayer every Tuesday, every Tuesday at 12 noon. Now, having said that, let me say to you, we have literally designated each day of the week for a dynamic expression of witnessing. So here's what I give you succinctly. Monday, here is our aspirational, indeed, here is our motivation for Monday. Monday, we call Message Monday. Message Monday. Here's what we are encouraging you to do on Monday. Take the notes that you've extracted from the sermon as pastor shares the word of the Lord, and we are encouraging you to take your notes, post your notes, share your notes, share a clip, we want you on Monday to take the message and give dynamic presentation again to the message that you receive on Sunday. Post it. Post your notes. That's Monday. Tuesday, here's what we're calling Text Tuesday because we're encouraging you on Tuesday, you are to text a family member, our members our friends, and encourage them. Listen, someone needs to hear a word of encouragement from you, but intentionally, you're going to text a word of encouragement on Tuesday. Now, all that I'm saying, you'll get in an extended version. Matter of fact, it will be documented, so you can go to our site and access it. But here's the point. I want you to hear Tuesday, you're going to encourage someone. Wednesday, we call Word Wednesday. Word Wednesday is just... Hear this, it is a time by which you will share a word from the word that the Lord has blessed you through his word and you're going to take your time with God in devotion every day and you're going to share that word with someone because that word has blessed you. That's Wednesday word. Thursday is designated for thankfulness. We're going to share on Thursday those persons are personed whom the Lord has blessed us with and what the Lord has done in our lives. On Thursday, we're going to post it. We're going to text it. We're going to call someone and share with them how we thank God for them and how we thank God for what he's doing in our lives. It's thankful Thursday. Friday, we call it Faith Friday because on Friday, intentionally, we will give ourselves intentionally to sharing the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll call someone. We'll text someone. We'll do whatever creative means, hear me, that we can engage to share our faith on Friday. Now, Sunday, let me talk just a bit about Sunday. Sunday, we want to get our viewership up. We have to. You can. Every member, we are encouraging you that every Sunday you invite at least five persons to be a part of our worship experience. You can host a watch party. Whatever you do, we want you extensively, expansively, we want you to invite five persons to our service on Sunday morning and invite five persons on Wednesday. It is our goal to literally elevate our viewership to 500 Bible study, five, at least 500, and then on Sunday, no less than 1,000 viewers. We can do that, but you got to do your job. 
You have to be intentional. I know you will. I thank you in advance. You have to invite five persons to our worship service, five persons to our Bible study. Host a watch. Hear me. We are given now to witnessing without excuse. Now, having said that, I want to encourage the membership to gear up, to gird yourself for 2021 because we are excited. Now, listen, we're so excited that on the fourth Sunday of each month, normally we had dubbed that as No Space Sunday. No Space Sunday, of course, you remember 2020, No Space Sunday, but the pandemic came, and of course, we really didn't understand that we would have an empty sanctuary. So here is our creative now way of bringing us to a place where we add to our worship on Sunday morning, and we do it intentionally. Here's what we're encouraging. Fourth Sunday is declared as family day indeed of worship where the whole family will come together and worship together and then you will take a photo of the family and post it. We want to see your family. Fourth Sunday, we want to see that as we're led by Dr. Davison to cultivate Families of fortitude and families that will be the fortress of the community, moreover the church, we want you, hear me, to call the family together, worship together, pray together, sing together, and then I want you to take a family portrait and share it, post it, so that we can see you in worship. You can tell we're excited. Pastor is excited. I'm excited. And we're going to do all that we can. Hear me. You're going to hear us at different intervals. We're going to push. We're going to promote. We're going to pitch. We're going to present. You're going to know that 2020 is a year of transformation through witnessing. Indeed, we're going to collectively, individually, commit ourselves with the spirit of Christ to be a witness. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. And we look forward to our partnership as we move forward in the spirit of Christ. Let me just say, I'm excited. Sola Deo Gloria. To God alone be the glory. Write the vision. Write the vision. Make it plain. Make it plain. That they may run. That they may run. And not faint. And not faint. Though the vision. Though the vision. Is only for a while. Is only for a while. It shall speak. It shall speak. And not lie. And not lie. One thing you can count. For if the Lord said it. For if the Lord said it. You can count on it. You can count on it. He will do. He will do just what he said. What he said. Write the vision. Write the vision. Make it plain. Make it plain. That they may run. That they may run. And not faint. And not faint. Though the vision. Though the vision. Is only for a while. Is only for a while. It shall speak. It shall speak. And not lie. And not lie. For if the Lord said it. For if the Lord said it. You can count on it. You can count on it. He will do. He will do just. 
Jesus. Just what? What he said. He said. Come on, right there in your home, sing it with us. It is so. It is so. Yes, it is. Yes, it is so. He will do. He will do just, just what? What he Come on, help us sing it. It is so. It is so. Yes, it is. Yes, it is so. He will do. He will do just, just what, what he said. He said. Come on, lift your voice and sing it. It is. It is so. Yes, it is. Yes, it is so. Write the vision. 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 He will do. He will do just what he said. If you believe God will do what he said, you ought to give him praise and give him glory. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall indeed, I will rejoice and be glad in it. New Mount Olive, again, I greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Indeed, we are gifted, we are graced, we are blessed to be alive. So blessed. This is Vision Sunday, and I want to thank again our music ministry for being in sync with our senior pastor and indeed the vision. The prophet says, write the vision, make it plain. And of course, thank you, uh, Brother Smith, for reminding us that vision is so vital to our viability. And I encourage us the more, New Mount Olive, let's collectively embrace the vision of God for this house. Well, it's time for us to do what we love doing here at the New Mount Olive Church, and that is we love blessing the Lord. It is our time really to adore him, to worship him anew, and to say to him, thank you, Father. Matter of fact, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you and I the kingdom. That's what, of course, Jesus would say. We are blessed to bring our tithe, the tenth. Matter of fact, to give it. We are blessed to give out of the rich deposits that the Lord has given to us. And of course, we do that to bless the Lord cheerfully. Bow with me for a moment. Father, we thank you for this blessed privilege, the novelty of uh, this encounter to give unto you that which you've given unto us. And we declare that all that we have belongs to thee. And it's of thine own that we give unto thee. It is our prayer now that you'll receive our tenth, our tithe, and our offerings. You'll receive, and indeed, we pray that you will be glorified through our giving. That's ultimately. And then, existentially, we pray that the kingdom will be expanded, God, as we invest in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. We give because... We love the Lord and because we believe in kingdom building. Amen. Listen, brace yourself. I'm just as excited as you are. Pastor will share with us again from the Joseph narrative. And indeed, he will teach us and indeed, he will expose us to this whole matter of obedience and obstacles and how we can see our obstacles as an opportunity to advance the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Blessings of the Lord be upon you. Pray for our senior pastor as he comes to share with us. Look forward to seeing you soon. Amen. How good the Lord is. Blessings to each of you indeed. It is a blessing and a privilege to have this opportunity to share the word of God with you once again. If you would, bow your heads with me as we go to God in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we stop now to say thank you. God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for the bounty of blessings that you have so graciously bestowed upon us. We pray now, O oh God, for our time together that you would allow your word to enrich and empower us for your glory. It is in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we offer this prayer. And every child of God said, Amen. If you have your Bibles, I would ask of you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, and I want to read verses 18, 19, and 20, but I'm going to look at verses 12 through 17 as we share the message as we left from verse 11 on last week. Hear the word of God as it speaks to us. When they saw him from a distance and before he came close to them, they plotted against him to put him to death. They said to one another, here comes the dreamer. Now then, come and let us kill and throw him into one of the pits. And we will say, a wild beast devoured him. Then let us see what will become of his dreams. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto our God. I want to talk again as we look at our theme, Witnessing Beyond Your Wounds, I want to look specifically at this aspect of when obedience leads to obstacles, when obedience leads to obstacles. As we look at the text, we look and study the life of Joseph. Joseph, the 17-year-old young man who experiences this unique relationship with his father. And that relationship leads to the father rewarding him in a certain way. That relationship with the father, that reward from the father, ultimately causes him to experience rejection because of the father that rejection comes from his brothers his brothers literally hate him because of how the father loves him how the father views him how the father has rewarded his life and I want you to know beloved when God rewards your life because of your relationship with him you will discover that there will be some people who will literally reject you because of how the father has favored your life now when we talk about this favor I must submit to you that with favor it comes with a level of pain it comes with the level of problems from others because everybody can't handle how the father is purposing your life it is it is in this text where the father rewards the son with this tunic and this tunic is representative of the father giving him a promise it suggests how the father views him positionally with his other brothers now understand this he has these older brothers and these older brothers perhaps were anticipating the father giving them the birthright but because the father has the prerogative to choose whomever he wants to choose to give the promise to he gives this promise to their younger brother Joseph and it leads to these older brothers leading and desiring to plot and scheme against him now we see that in verses 18 19 and 20 but before you get to verses 18 19 and 20 and after you have 
moved through verses 1 through 11 and it is in verses 5 through 11 where we see Joseph sharing his dreams with his brother and ultimately his father. His brothers cannot seem to reckon with what is going to happen futuristically with Joseph and with them because what they discover is based upon what he shares in his dream they will ultimately have to bow to Joseph. And they can't seem to understand how that is going to happen. And thus, it causes them to hate him all the more. But then he shares the second dream with his father. And in essence, the father and the mother will also have to bow to Joseph. This seemed to cause quite a bit of stir within Brother Joseph's family, particularly with his brothers. They could not seem to appreciate his future, particularly when the future caused them to have to be servile to him. Now, when you get from verse number 11, there is a bridge that I believe that happens in verses 12 through 17 that you can't miss. It is in verses 12 through 17 where I, I want to just point out two things this morning in the message what happens when you are witnessing beyond your wounds and that oftentimes our obedience to the father will lead to obstacles and ultimately it will lead to opposition the first thing we see in verses 12 through 17 is the devotion to the Father. And then we see in verses 18, 19, and 20, the difficulties from foes. Those foes happen to be family, but I want to say this parenthetically. Some of your greatest foes will not necessarily be people on the outside, but many times it will be those who are familiar to you. And in Joseph's case, it was his family. So notice in the text, it, it, it is in verses 12 through 17 when you watch the text it says then his brothers went to pasture their father's flock in Shechem Israel said to Joseph are you are not your brothers pastoring the flock in Shechem come and I will send you to them he said to him I will go then he said to him go now and see about the welfare of your brothers and the welfare of the flock and bring word back to me so he sent him from the valley of Hebron and he came to Shechem a man found him and behold he was wandering in the field and the man asked him what are you looking for he said, I am looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pasturing the flock. Then the man said, they have moved from here. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Now, what I want us to understand is that the brothers, according to what the father's knowledge was, they were supposed to be in Shechem. That's where he thought that they would be but when Joseph got to Shechem he discovered they were not in Shechem but they were ultimately in Dothan and if you understand historically it is these brothers who had killed the men in Shechem in the earlier chapters when you will read so there was this bitter blood between Joseph's brothers and the people of Shechem therefore it put Joseph in a precarious predicament along with the brothers to even be in that vicinity yet they are not where they said they would be so therefore they are not where the father thought they would be and where they told the father they would be so that would suggest even there these brothers have a problem with following instructions and these brothers struggle with discipline well what we discover in the text is this devotion to the father that we see in Joseph is what we must learn as we are witnesses for the Lord as we walk with God and many times it is our walk with the Father that will lead to the wounds that we will have many times as we are walking and ultimately witnessing for him. 
Well, in the text, if you notice three things about this devotion to the Father, we first see the submission to the Father because it is in verse 13 when it says, Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pastoring in the pastoring the flock in Shechem? Come and I will send you to them. And he said to him, I will go. Well, well that suggests that, that there is this submission to the Father. Now, perhaps... Jacob did not know the the dissension that was brewing between the brothers and Joseph or perhaps he did it was just of no consequence to him nonetheless I believe Joseph recognized that there was a rift in the relationship with his brothers yet he understood that if the father gives me directions I must be submissive to the father so when Jacob called Joseph to pursue his brothers Jacob response was one of nobility he simply says here am I he did not say well dad the brothers and I are at odds with one another he did not say well dad I don't feel comfortable going to the brothers because of how they responded to me when I shared my dream with them he simply said I must submit to the father and this indicated his readiness to be submissive to the command of the father he gives us an example of what a good servant ought be as servants of the most high we must embrace the reality of being those who will for and willingly submit to the words of the Father. And in this service of Christendom, what we must understand is the service unto Christ, it begins with our submission unto Christ. And many people fail to serve well and fail to serve effectively because they cannot bring themselves to be submissive to Christ. And if a person is not submissive, to Christ. Come in leader, let me whisper in your ear. If a person will not submit to Christ, you might as well forget them submitting to your leadership because if they will not submit under the auspices of the Holy Spirit to a Christ that we serve, they will never commit to the person that God has seated in their context for them to look up to and lead them in the way that they should go. But Joseph gives us this example Example of what one ought to do when they understand what it means to be a servant of God. You must be submissive and you must have this submission to the Father. Notice there was no rebuttal of Joseph with Jacob. There was no rejection of Joseph to his father Jacob. He just responded as a responsible son and as a responsible child to the Father. I just wish I could encourage someone here right now as the father gives you some difficult directions he may give you some difficult demands but you've got to learn what it means to be to, to what it means to be devoted to the divine you've got to be willing to submit even when it means you may be put in a difficult dilemma but know that if the father is sending you the father will take care of you and I'm glad that we have a a God who will ultimately take care of us but not only do we see the submission to the father but we see the sacrifice to the father because as you understand the text in verses 12 through 17 what we know is that for jo for Jacob to send Joseph uh, out from the home house and ultimately send him to the place of where his brothers were it meant that he would have to leave the comfort of his house, the comfort of his context. He would have to give of himself his time, his effort. It would inconvenience him. He didn't have an Uber or a Lyft that would take him from Hebron to Shechem. He would have to make this difficult journey according to the mode of transportation at that time. J Jacob, Jacob didn't have a 
private jet to send Joseph to Shechem. He simply had to make this difficult journey, leaving the comforts of his own home in order to go to where his brothers were so that he could do what his father had requested of him. Let me tell you, beloved, any time you are on a, a mission for the father based upon the messaging of the father, it will require some sacrifice. We see that in our Savior Jesus Christ. When God told him to come down to earth, he wraps himself, God wraps himself in human flesh. It is Jesus who leaves the comforts of glory so that he could come and dwell among us as a man and so that he could be a sacrifice for us so that we would not have to experience or taste death. I don't know about you but every time I think of the sacrifice of my Savior it reminds me of the sacrifices that we must make unto the Father but beloved I want you to know just because you are obedient it does not absolve you from facing obstacles and opposition but not only in this devotion to the Father do we see submission to the Father sacrifice to the Father but we see steadfastness to the Father because what it shows us is that Jacob he is stuck with this task and as he runs into problems and how do we know he runs into problems because when he gets to Shechem he sees this mystery individual he says what are you looking for he says I'm looking for my brothers well the brothers are not there so Joseph could have easily said well since my brothers are not in Shechem I'll go back to him I'll sit at my daddy's table where I know that it's comfortable in fact I don't have to go try to find them anyway they don't care about me anyway they are not concerned about me anyway matter of fact when I told them my dream they looked at me like I had a problem and they have been rejecting me and they have been at odds with me ever since but what I like about the steadfastness of Joseph and how it teaches us to be devoted to the Father even when we run into problems, even when we arrive in places that we have been commanded by the Father and it's just not what we have expected or thought it would be. It does not mean that we ought to quit and go home. That's a word for somebody right now. Let me whisper in your ear. I know the Father has sent you on some mission. He has, he has directed your life to do some things and when you got to the place that God had commanded you it did not pan out like you were anticipating it to pan out but my question is to you what was your response to the father did you stick to the plan or did you walk away did you show did you just show out getting mad because what God or the father had directed you to was not necessarily there and it required greater sacrifice because what happens in the text is since they are not in Shechem Joseph has to journey further to get to Dothan to find his brothers to check on the welfare of people who don't even care about you to check on the welfare of people who are not concerned about you in fact checking on the welfare of folk who are intentionally planning to do you harm come here somebody God will send you to some people sometime that don't have your best interest at heart God will send you to some people sometime that do not care about what happens to your future in fact they are intent on trying to mess you up that leads me to my next point notice that there is this difficulties from foes that we see ironically the foes in the text are not people that Joseph is not familiar with but his foes are his own family his foes are those who he's familiar with well beloved let me tell you verse 18 19 and 20 would suggest to us verse 18 when they saw him from a distance and for they came close to, to them he came close to them they plotted against him to put him to death let me tell you, difficulties from foes will be because people will try to damage you. Not only will people try to damage you according to verse 19, people will try to demean you because when we look at verse number 19, guess what it said? They said to one another, here comes 
this dreamer. dreamer. They, they were trying to talk in a demeaning fashion. But then in verse number 20, not only would people try to damage you, not only would people try to demean you, but people would try to destroy you. Because verse number 20 says, Now then come and let us kill him. Throw him into one of the pits. We will say a wild beast devoured him. Then let us see what will become of his dreams. Let me just package this and then unpack it real quick. First of all, people will try to damage you. Verse 18 it says in the text, when they saw him from a distance. How did they, how did they know who Joseph was from a distance? I'll tell you how they knew him. It was because of his coding. People would try to damage you because of the father's coating. Joseph was coated by the father and the coat represented his position among the brothers and it represented his purpose and ultimately the promise from the father. Well, there are some people that are looking at you right now and it's your coding that is causing them the greatest crisis. They can't handle how the father has covered and coded your life. Because to these boys, it represented something that they rejected, not only of Joseph, but also of the father. Well, they see him and he's coming from a distance. And it says in the text, that they came, that he came close to them and they plotted against him. Well, they want to damage you because of the father's coding. They also want to damage you because of the father's commissioning. The fact that Joseph was given this coat of many colors that was recognizable from a distance. These boys were reminded that the father had commissioned him to ultimately be over them. Because as I told you in last week's message, the coat was representing a person who would be in a supervisory role over those who were working. So when the brother saw him at a distance, it reminded them of his position that was above them and their position that was under him some people cannot handle how God has positioned you in life and since they can't handle how God has positioned you in life they try to figure out a way to plot and plan your pain well let me tell you not only was it the father's coding the father's commissioning but it was also the father's connection because when they saw him coming in that coat, it was a reminder of how Joseph was distinctly and differently connected to the father. There are some people, when they see you, it just reminds them of the blessings of God on your life. And they just can't handle it, so they want to try and damage your life. I'm trying not to get too excited, but, but the more I see this in the text, it reminds me of my own story in life but then we see in the text people would try to demean you notice what they said to Joseph in the text it says they said one to another here comes the dreamer what they're simply saying this is the boy that thinks he's all that this is the brother that thinks he's all that and they want to demean you because of your favor and because of your future the dream simply reminded these brothers of what had been bestowed upon Joseph. And there are some people that when they see you in life, they can't handle what's happening and therefore they want to demean you. And since they want to demean you, they want to demean you because of the favor that God has placed on your life. Mm -hmm. Then there will be people who try to demean you because of the future that they see that's awaiting your life. Oh Lord, you must remember 
remember that these brothers uh, had heard uh, what uh, Joseph uh, had told uh, them uh, in his dream. And uh, in uh, that dream, uh, Joseph had told them, uh, well, uh, I had a sheaf and uh, your sheaf uh, were bowing down uh, to my sheaf. And the brother simply said, so what you're saying is uh, you uh, will reign uh, over us. Oh, Lord, uh, some people uh, can't handle uh, how God uh, has uh, forwarded uh, your future because uh, they feel like uh, what's happening uh, in your future really ought to be happening uh, in uh, their future. But then, uh, as you keep reading the text, uh, the Bible says uh, in verse number 20, uh, now then uh, come uh, and let us kill him um, and um, throw him uh, into one of the pits uh, and then uh, we'll say a wild beast devoured him um, then uh, let us uh, see what will uh, become of his dreams. Um, well, um, some people uh, will want to destroy you because um, of what's been placed um, on uh, your life. Um, some people um, will want to destroy you uh, because of what's been placed um, in your life and some people um, will want to destroy you because what's been promised um, to your life um, oh lord um, and that's what we see in the text um, his brothers couldn't understand um, and they couldn't handle um, what the, the father had placed uh, on his life um, Lord, and I want to tell somebody who's listening uh, to me right now uh, be careful uh, of folk uh, who get close to you, uh, folk that will come close to you because um, of what God uh, has placed on your life. Uh, they don't all uh, weigh the mean you're good. Uh, these brothers said uh, if we can take the dream out, um, we can um, take the dream out and that reminds me of a man named Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It was the same man that had a dream that he talked about on Washington and there were those who couldn't handle the dream so they figured if we kill the dream we can kill the dream but I got good news if you try to kill the a dream uh, you may cause a dream to flourish uh, oh lord um, and I remember a man uh, named Jesus uh, they figured uh, if we could just kill him uh, we'll silence his life uh, but what they did not know uh, was uh, when uh, they tried to nail him to the cross uh, when uh, they thought piercing him in the side uh, when and, uh, they thought placing uh, a crown of thorns uh, on his head uh, when uh, they thought um, taking him out um, would end it all uh, but what they did not know uh, is he said uh, and I if I be shucks uh, oh Lord uh, and I if I be lifted up um, from the earth uh, I will draw all men uh, unto me they had him on the ground nails in his hand they had him on the ground they thought that it was over but they put him on the cross and as they started lifting him up he was chained and lied and he still chained and lied and I've got good news for somebody here they hung him on the cross placed him in a tomb three days later he got out the grave with all power in in his hand and I stop to tell him tell somebody we serve a God shucks we serve a God who's 
still uh, holding uh, the lives of those uh, who try to take you out. Uh, and if I could give you a, a snippet uh, into Joseph's future, uh, you will discover uh, what folk meant for evil. Um, the Lord uh, turned it around uh, for his good. Uh, and I stop by to tell somebody uh, they may try to take you out, uh, but hold on, uh, hold on. Uh, God will um, take care of you. Uh, yes, he will. Uh, yes. She will. Uh, I'm a living uh, testimony. If you hang on, uh, God will hold on to you. Uh, and when you can't hang on, uh, thank God uh, he'll hang on to you. Uh, yes, he will. Uh, yes, uh, yes, he will. Uh, I'm a living uh, testimony. Uh, that's why I say it all of the time. Uh, can't nobody um, do me like Jesus. Uh, can't nobody Hold me like Jesus. Is there anybody here can say it with me? Can nobody hold me like Jesus? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. God, we say thank you that even when our obedience to you will lead us to obstacles and opposition, it still gives you the opportunity to open a way for us. And for that, God, we simply say thank you. God, I pray that even in this moment, for the person who does not know you as Lord and Savior, that they would recognize their need for you as Lord of their life. God, I pray now that you would touch the heart of that man, woman, boy, or girl. Life has taken them down a dark and dismal path they feel as if they are all out of options but today God remind them that you are a God of another chance renew and restore that relationship God I pray for the person who even in the midst of the pandemic they've not been able to seemingly connect with the church but if you are leading them God, I pray that your guidance of them would, would lead them to the place that you would have them to be. And if you so desire to guide them to the New Mount Olive Baptist Church, help us to teach them the truth of Scripture and how to apply that truth to their life each and every day. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for keeping us. We pray now, God, that you would hear and answer our prayer. It is in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And every child of God said, Amen. God bless you, beloved. I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Take care. Well, bless the Lord. Weren't we blessed indeed how our God uses our senior pastor. I am so enlightened indeed. I am so empowered, enriched. Listen, I feel like going on. I know you do. Let me bless you. Benediction, pause yourself for the benediction. Following the benediction, we will again declare our witnessing statement together. But let me first benedict you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May our God make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our God lift up his countenance upon you, precious people of God, and give you peace now and forevermore. In the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, amen. We prepare now for our witnessing declaration together.
we, the New Mount Olive Baptist Church, are sent out to witness the gospel as we worship the Lord in the world. Amen, amen, amen. Go and be a witness. Indeed, go and bless someone with this glorious gospel.